Hey guys, what's up here? Uh, another commentary for you today. This is another um, subscriber for me commentary. Um, this is sent in to me by the Cogmore. So this is going to be an AD carry commentary. Um, and I'm not a great AD carry player, but I'm going to try and uh, just see, uh, just try this commentary, see how it goes. See, uh, I kind of want to do more uh, more roles because I think it reaches a wider audience. Even though my channel is more like dedicated to jungling, I thought, you know, if, if this helps you guys, then I may as well try it. If this turns out to be an utter disaster, then there's that as well. Um, so this game uh, was sent in by the Cogmore Seas of the Clown. Uh, thank you for sending me in your sending me in your replay. If you guys wanna send me your replays, then uh, you can do that by sending me an email to foxblow at gmail dot com. Um, but let's forget all that stuff. Let's start talking about the game now. Cogmore, his lane, he is uh, Cog and Nunu, which is a really really strong lane matchup. Nunu's attack speed buff with his blood boil just means that Cogmore is very very effective because the way Cogmore's W works is by Arcane Barrage means that with each attack he's doing a lot of he's doing percentage health damage uh, to the enemy so the faster he attacks the more that percentage health damage he's actually doing so attack speed is really really good on Cogmore which is why Nunu Cog is such a strong potent lane uh, one thing we'll mention actually before is that uh, I, I have got a new mic so this may sound a bit different let me know if you think this mic is better I, I'll probably need to tweak some stuff so forgive me if it's not perfect uh, Anyway, the, the enemy lane is uh, Tarek Vayne, which is kind of old school. I think that lane is very... Mm, Vayne... I think Cog should be able to beat this Vayne because he can just outrange poker. However, if they do decide to fight, then this Vayne's going to pretty much rinse this uh, Cog more because Cog is kind of susceptible to people who just all in him, which is why Graves can be pretty good as well versus him. But let me change the Fog of War quickly. Red, yep, there you go. Uh, so um, it depends how the lane goes. Like if if Cog gets stunned or something, then uh, ta by Tarek, then they could really combo that with like a condemn or something, and he could be in a lot of trouble. But if he plays the lane right, then he should be able to have his way with his vane a little bit. Now we are two minutes twenty five, two twenty six, two twenty seven, and he's got blood bile on him, and this is kind of what's happening now. This Nunu got a bit too aggressive there. But Cog is doing what he should be doing, where if Nunu is taking three hits, then Cog needs to be taking hits. Like, if this Vayne is standing there attacking Nunu, if she wants to be doing that, then fair enough. But Cog needs to be hitting the Nunu, um, the Vayne as well. So she, so Vayne needs to be making the decision, I can be hitting this Nunu, but I'm going to get hit back. And most of the times, it's not going to be worth it. Although, this Nunu's items, he does have three health potions, and he's on half health. He's deciding not to use those potions, which I think is a questionable decision. I think he should be popping his potion right here. Um, yeah, it's kind of, I don't know. To be honest, you shouldn't really be getting consume either if you're a Nunu support. Or at least, like, if you don't have consume, then that's not, that's a good thing. And if you do have consume, I think, like, it's not awful, it's not terrible. But uh, if you you know, if you can get that extra point into like your Ice Blast or your Blood Boy or whatever you're maxing, because Nunu support can max either W or E. Although with this lane, I should presume that Nunu is maxing his W over in favour of his E. Um, you'd be maxing your E if you're like in a burst lane or something like that. This is kind of like bad right here. Um, first off, Cog getting uh, yeah, Cog getting stunned is bad, but Nunu not having wards is bad as well. However. Eve will just bypass any wards because she's got uh, invisibility. So that's actually kind of like awkward. I guess he should just be looking at the time. I mean, it was like four minutes. Eve would have most likely had, you know, completed blue and red buff. And could have been, you know, guessing that Eve would come at him. But you can't really defend against that. You'd just be like doing guesswork as to when or not, when Eve would be... Uh, when Eve would be coming, and so because it was, it would have just been guesswork. What uh, should have happened with Nunu should have be should be warding uh, the bush that Tarek's standing in, so that Tarek isn't a threat to Cog. Even if Eve appears, it's not that big a threat to Cog. Uh, but if he gets stunned, like we saw, then he's going to die. Now, I just mention that uh, the summoners on these guys, Cogmore, is someone which, in my opinion doesn't necessarily need to be taking Ignite and that's partially because 
well, he's got such huge range that he might not necessarily even get into Ignite range. And also just the way he is, like, you just want to be, he's like an artillery. You just want to stand as far away as possible where you making use of your range. And to do that, something like Cleanse or Heal, just like a defensive summoner, you don't really need the Ignite. At least that's the way I see it. But at least, like, I don't know, you could, like, I don't think having Ignite is awful. I mean... You could take Ignite on anything. It's not like at least he doesn't have something like I don't know Rally or something like that. So, um, but yeah. Anyway, um, his first item which uh, Kogmore got was a uh, Longsword, and he's instantly got a Vamp Scepter. Now this is um, I don't I'm not really sure because I haven't seen this uh, before. I've never seen a Vamp Rush, and that itself might might be saying something you know the fact that i've never seen it may mean that it's not very good but i mean it could be decent uh i don't think he really needs it though because if you look at the kind of damage like well he doesn't have any heal from nunu so from that standpoint he like life still he does need but at the same time a lot of this the enemy laner's threat comes from like all in damage so tag will stun shatter and like vein will just burst uh, with a condemn or like a um with a three stack, two silver bolts. So, I'm, you know, life still is bad versus burst, and I think this thing has a bit of, you know, I think the biggest threat comes from the burst. But um, I don't, I don't want to write off this this item choice. I think it's okay. Uh, but yeah, like right now, this is this is good. Like that was a bad. It was kind of a bad arcane smash by Maokai, but this was just a good gank in general. That was cool, cool timing. I mean, Nunu did put a pink ward down in this bush over here. There's a pink ward down here, which was pretty smart. I mean, it actually destroyed a ward that was in that bush, and also that's going to help for any Eve ganks, which is cool. Um, it doesn't defend against anything in the uh, tri bush, however, which is um, which is a shame. But I mean, it's paying off so far. It doesn't need it and. This Cogmore, like, I don't really want to be commentating, comment, comment, commenting, my god, I can't speak, sorry. I don't really want to be commenting too much on, like, last hits and stuff like that. Like, I don't want to be, oh, he could have got last hit, oh, he could have got that last hit, oh, yeah, he really should have got this last hit. Because that's not really interesting, like, things like that are just mechanics which you need to work on, custom games if you have to, or just, like, playing the game in general. You know, just work on stuff like that. It's like when you're playing hockey. The more, like, things like skating, you can work on it, but just the more you work on other stuff, the more you play, the better your skating ability becomes. So it's exactly the same with your mechanics, like last hitting, stuff like that. Just play more games and you'll get better mechanics. And if your mechanics really do suck, then, you know, go out your way to improve them, like custom games, just practice last hit, stuff like that. But uh, I might comment on, like, benchmarks, which he should have. Like, if you're at 10 minutes, 70 CS by 10 minutes is decent. Like, it's not amazing it's not overly great but i mean it's more than enough especially considering like there's a lot often times like a lot of fighting happens now that kogamon's level six he needs to be a bit careful how he uses his ult because he's going to run out of mana if he's not careful like he needs to wait for the every time you use an, your ulti as kogamon then uh, it, it stacks on itself and what that does is you do more damage with your ult like consecutive ults but uh, you also use more mana. And this Cogmore, if he starts spamming his ult, then he's going to waste his mana. So he should be careful not to do that. He needs to not spam his ult, which he isn't doing at the moment. I'm not saying he's doing that, uh, but just in general. Now, that their pink ward did get stomped, and they did see Eve with it. It's very rare to actually see an Eve jungle with uh, Flash. Uh, Flash is a good summon on Eve in general, but when you're taking Eve jungle, it's a very, very, like, balls deep, aggressive... Uh, jungle choice and so like exhaust or even ignite is usually more popular as e this vein has been taking a lot of free hits from Cogmore, which is really good on cog's behalf where he's just uh activating his w and just getting some free hits she wastes her flash there which was bad and uh if they don't don't uh do this too dumb they could maybe even get dragon out of this it depends. Does Nunu have a consume? Yeah, Nunu has ranked his consume. So these guys could be doing dragon right now. They got a nice gank off and bot. Eve is not strong enough to stop them. Uh, mid, <coughs> sorry, mid uh, Syndra is actually got a lot of pressure over this Victor. So they definitely could be doing drag here. They could uh, 
with with Nunu's consume, which does like is it a thousand damage or maybe no, no, that's that's Cho'Gath. Yeah, five hundred. Okay, it's slightly less than a thousand. Five hundred true damage on his consume with Smite as well. I mean, they they could be doing this drag, I, I believe, but they decided not to, and it's kind of understandable. I mean, ten minute dragons are pretty early, especially when you don't have a carry jungler. Like if Maokai was playing like Lee Sin or Nocturne or Shaco, then um. Dragon would have most likely been taken right here, but Maokai himself doesn't do a lot for Dragon, so he's not going to do it. This Maokai's played pretty well, I think he's made most of the plays. There, this is something which he's making a mistake though, and I, I did comment this on, on when I did a Maokai commentary before. He's using his Arcane Smash just like randomly, like he's... I, I'll rewind it and show you, where he, he walks up to GP, right, and then he Qs in this direction. Uh, not GP, sorry, that's Yorick. But he, he'll... He'll root him and then he'll cue him towards his own tower. When you when you're playing Malkai, you want to root the enemy and then walk behind them while they're still snared and then Arcane smash them, cue them in the opposite direction. I mean the difference is uh, pretty big. It's like a flash flash worth of distance, so it's definitely worth doing. But talking about this bot lane, he's kind of losing on CS and he's rushed to Zeal, which I think is. Well, it's getting attack speed early is not uh, uncommon on, on Cogmore. I personally would... Uh, would um, Actually, you know what? I, I don't think there's anything overly wrong with this. I was going to say like that he should maybe have like some move speed, especially considering Vayne's passive, where she'll be really fast, and the fact that she has tier 2 boots. Um, so she's going to be very, very fast compared to, to Cogmore. But, uh, on the other hand... Cog does have a bit of move speed from Zeal, although it's pretty pathetic. Five percent. I'm not quite sure what that adds, what that equates to. Um, and with Blood Boil as well, he's got a lot of uh, move speed from that. And like looking at when his Blood Boil is on, it's not on at the moment. But I think I saw when it was on, he had like four. Yeah, he's got four eighteen move speed, which is a lot of move speed for tier one boots. So he probably doesn't need tier two necessarily. Um, so I think his build so far, I mean, it, it does make last hitting pretty difficult because you don't actually, when you have crit, it's like last hitting with the wriggles, it's actually really frustrating because crit is so unreliable for last hitting. If you're just trying to, you know, if you don't actually have a lot of damage, then you're kind of thinking, right, this this creep will take two hits, maybe three hits, and then you crit it randomly and you put it on five health and you lose the CS, I mean... It can make CSing a bit difficult, so you do have to be careful uh, when you do uh, rush these kind of builds, like like having crit or foregoing damage, and of course, like missing last hits is not not very good. But this this Malkai, I actually like the way he's playing. He's kind of um, this vein is being a bit silly here. I mean, Cogmore's ult is actually really good for against Vayne. Like, I mean, it's very like. You don't pick Cogmore thinking, oh, against Vayne, thinking, oh, uh, I'll just use my ult onto Vayne because then when she ults, she won't go invisible because I have stealth detection, which is what Cog's ult does. That is, like, very, very situational. Like, I mean, if Vayne gets hit by a Cog ult, then, I mean, that's pretty bad and you, you can't rely on that happening. But it's just something else, like a little thing which is very helpful. Uh, like, you know, if it happens. But this is something which I, I think this Cogmore, um, like, mechanically, what he needs to do, he, he's not, like, a, attack moving enough. Like, like when he was attacking Eve before, he was just standing there, uh, right-clicking, and, like, not gaining ground. Like, you need to be, this Maokai is, okay, that was really, that was silly, and now he's gonna, yeah. This is, um, they just kind of stay too long, they got a bit too greedy. Wow, he got blown up big time then. Um, but th it's actually plays like this, which kind of, I mean, if this play hadn't happened, if, if these plays in general don't happen, then, uh, you know, this uh, purple team had a pretty big lead. They were 8-4 up, so they had double the kills, and now they're only 300 gold ahead. And so th those kind of plays are really, like, cripple teams a little bit early. They're like... They they halt any kind of like snowball like purple team could have uh, gone on to snowball a little bit here, uh, but instead they're just like they they're pretty much even now. 
And, and this Cinder has been beating this Swain, but because Swain... No, it's not Swain, it's Victor, sorry, my bad. Cinder has been beating Victor, but because Victor has roamed... I have no idea what this Yorick's doing. Because Victor has roamed, Victor has more pressure. Like, uh, it's kind of... Maybe it's a misconception when you're laning that if you have more CS that you've won your lane. That is really not how it goes. Like, yes, if you have more CS, and that's obviously a good thing. But the aim of the game when you're in the lane is that you want to be come out of it stronger than the enemy, or you want to have more pressure than the enemy while you're laning. If you have none of the above, then that's when things start going very bad. And there's no reason to say, like, that um, CS, having more CS is like, a, you know, is you winning because what CS does is that it, it uh, like influences how strong you are coming out of the lane, but it doesn't, you know, it's not a brand saying how strong you are, you know, if that makes sense. Like, yes, CS helps towards you getting stronger, but no, CS does not dictate how strong you are. Especially like talking about um, that full, fully channeled. Fully channeled Nuna well. This is something which I don't know whether Vayne will escape this. Okay, they're going on. Mm. See, uh, that fight kind of went. I think Hulk should have tried to kite more through the Nunu ult because uh, the Nunu ult has the like perma slow. Well, perma slow. The Nunu ult like has its AOE slow, so Hulk could have been kiting through it. But instead, he just stood there taking it, taking damage from Vayne. And that was obviously a mistake, but also he should have been running towards towards Vayne. Because lo it looked like he gave up, like he knew he wasn't going to win that fight. This is very sloppy. Very unlucky, but, you know, sloppy nonetheless. Oh man, this is bad. This game is going downhill very quickly. This is a slippery slope. We'll see what, what happens. But, and, like I was saying, sorry, um... Like I was saying, uh, I don't actually know what I was saying. I'm really bad at doing this. I, I always forget what I'm talking about. Um, yeah, sorry. With, with Vayne, he should have been moving towards Vayne. Uh, you know, either he should have been running away to Kite, or because it looked like he gave up, which, you know, I think it's pretty obvious that he did give up. He thought, fuck it, I'm dead. So he just stood there. And it's like, he should have, like, moved towards Vayne. Because then, when his passive pro popped, he would have been able to hit Vayne with it. He gave up with it. Uh when he did die because he like Vayne was out of range and so he went for Tarek and what that happened what happened then was that Vayne just turned around and killed Nunu as well. If uh, Vayne had been hit by Cogmore's passive then they probably wouldn't have been able to uh you know Vayne may have even died but definitely probably wouldn't have, de definitely probably yeah definitely would not have killed uh Nunu. So that's something to think about when you are playing Cog. Just think about position yourself for your passive. Now he's getting really destroyed by this. Like right now, he should be running away instead of standing still because he's gonna die. Like that was good. I mean, that was good to kill Vayne. But like, if you can just kite through the Nunu slow, I mean, uh, Cogmore's range is so much better than Vayne's range. He could have been kiting, and he would have reached a point where because Vayne was so slow, she would have been so far away from. They're probably going to do Baron here, uh, Dragon here, maybe. Oh, I, I, I don't know. Uh, nah. Anyway, they would have been at, uh, Cog would have been at the point where he was actually further away from Vayne so that she couldn't have hit him, but he could have hit her. So that there's something to, to think about. This guy needs to be kiting a bit more, playing Cog more. If, when you're playing Cog more, you definitely want to be kiting because you want to make the most of your range. Whenever you're playing a character that has any form of range, you know, like Xerath, uh, has a lot of range, then um, Cogmore obviously, Caitlyn has a lot of range. There's a reason those characters have range, and if you do have range, you want to be abusing it, you want to make the most of it, because uh, oftentimes, you know, champions aren't like loaded with every kit, you know, known to man, like, they're not, you know, Cogmore has a lot of range, which is a plus side of him, but he also has some downfalls, like, he has no actual escape, like, it's not like he has a gap, gap closer, like, you know, Ezra has his arcane shift, or uh, Grace has his dash, so, you know, every champ has their up and downs, and if you're not using your champion's, you know, ups, then you're just highlighting your downs, really, you're not, you're not playing your champion to the most efficiency, the most, how effective you can be, so, if you're playing someone like Cogmore, 
who has a lot of range. If you're not abusing your range, then you're not, not playing him to the max uh, efficiency. So I look a little bit about at the CS here. We are 20 minutes in. I'm not entirely sure what ELO this is. I've forgotten, but I believe it's around around, around 12, 1300. Um, most of the replays that I get sent are around that ELO. Um, I'm really like, I'm not going to say like, you know, oh, this Cogman should have 155 20 minutes in. This guy's so bad because that's like a completely unnecessary statement to make. And it doesn't help you know, in the in the scheme of the game, because really just compare yourself to your lane partner, unless you've taken a, like, a huge crap on your lane partner, like, say you've just denied someone and like zoned them and stuff like that, you know, if they're like 50 CS behind because you've been doing that, then, you know, don't compare yourself to them, but like, or, uh, sorry, that you can still compare yourself to them because you'd just be like, I'm 50 CS behind my lane partner, and like, Cogmore is pretty much the same as this Vayne, so he's not behind by any sense, like, their AD is just as strong, I don't think Vayne is much stronger than Cogmore, if if at all, really, I mean, she does have a blood dust, so I have a, and she's got, she has got more kills, so she's, okay, she's more, Vayne is more fed than Cogmore, but I, you know, I don't think he's been outlaned by Vayne, but by any stretch of the imagination, if I were to be so bold as to say who was the stronger player, Cogmore or Vayne, I would most definitely say this is Cogmore is better than Vayne. Vayne has not played very well at all, but just the way that these like these roams from uh, Victor have really like crippled at uh, Cogmore's bot lane. The roams have been really poor, like uh, from his team and pretty opportunistic from their team. Like it's kind of like a double-edged sword when you're winning your lane and you're applying a lot of pressure and you're pushing or you're being aggressive or whatever. Then people come and help that lane, or at least sometimes they do, or they should do. And so if you can't deal with that pressure, then that's when things start turning around. And that's kind of what's happened this game. And again, this Cogmore is not abusing his range. And yeah, he just kind of stood still. And he wasn't like he wasn't really aware of where the enemies were. He should get Tarek here, though, which is cool. And But Malkai, I think this Malkai suicided by running so close to Vayne. I really hope that's not the case. Ah, uh, he's good. Although he's really slow does have tier 2 boots, but he's really slow. Or maybe he just looks slow. Um, but yeah, this Cog is, again, just... You no, know, he's, he's standing a bit too close to enemies, I think. I feel like he should be... Be a bit further away to people. I mean, it's like when you play snooker. Um, actually, I don't know how popular snooker is anywhere in the world. Because, I like, obviously, living in the UK, snooker is fairly popular. But, uh, so I hope you guys get this reference. But, like, if you're... Now, snooker players always, you know, they don't just play the shot at hand, they're playing shots like, you know, like 10 shots ahead, or maybe that's an exaggeration, but like 3 or 4 shots ahead, because if you make one shot, then you get another shot, and if you make that shot, you get another one, another one, another one, so on and so forth. So people are always thinking, well, if I make this shot, where's the ball going to go? Where's the cue ball going to go? And like, they don't want to, like screw themselves over by making a shot, you know, a good a good shot, like, now, and then when it comes to the next shot, they fuck themselves over because they've they've positioned the cue ball poorly. It's exactly like that in LOL when you're, when you're, like, fighting or something like that, and you're like, oh, this is cool, I've killed him here, and then, like, someone else comes, and you're thinking, oh, crap, I'm dead because I positioned poorly, like, because you're just not thinking things through, you're not thinking about the future and stuff like that. It's actually things like that which are kind of like how you get pentakills. People who are very good at like managing, you know, thinking uh, in the future, exactly what I've been talking about basically. People who are good at doing that get a lot of pentakills. I have friends who get a lot of pentakills just because they're very aggressive players for starters, but also because they're good at thinking things through like this. And I have no idea why I'm not looking at bot lane. I apologise. I went off in a bit of tangent there, but it looks like they just got ganked again. Um, which is really peculiar considering his body is here and his mini wave is here so he got like pretty heavily ganked right there which is a bit annoying i'd be a bit annoyed if i was cogmore uh but you know whatever it happens uh they they're kind of like um as far as what they want to be doing right now what they want to kind of achieve like this new new by the way uh Okay, this is peculiar, but this Nunu, uh, when he was in lane, he snowballed Tarek a lot, which is something you don't want to be doing. If you're playing, uh, well, in general, you want to be CCing the AD carry because he's the biggest threat in the lane. Uh, however, 
Uh, well, especially when you're playing Nunu because your E is a move speed slot. It's just it's just like a huge anti AD debuff. That's basically what Nunu Snowball does, especially against someone like Vayne who scales really well off attack speed because of her W. This Syndra is bonkers. That was very very suicidal tendencies right there. That was odd. Anywho, uh, Nunu, yeah, just just like. If you've got an attack speed debuff or something like that, just snowball the AD carry. He's snowballed Tarek way too much and it's kind of screwed his lane over a little bit. He probably would have come off better in certain fights, certain trades, if the um, AD got snowballed. And what, what snowballing actually does, which is why Nunu is actually like, really strong, is uh, partially it's because when you uh, nerf someone's attack speed, then... You like deny their ability to trade back with you because it takes them so long to get that first attack off. Like if you're, you know, say Cog basic attacked this Vayne twice and Nunu snowballed him. Vayne is not going to be able to trade back partially because she's too slow like with her move speed. Uh, but also it's going to take way too long for her to actually load up a basic attack to like trade back with someone because of her attack speed is so, so slowed. Um, now looking at the item builds a bit again, this is something I, I tend to neglect a little bit when I'm doing my commentary, so I apologise, but uh, right now this Vayne has a Bloodthirster and Phantom Dancer, and Cogmore has Bloodthirster and almost a Phantom Dancer, so they're very, very close in items, they're very, very close in farm, uh, in gold they are not so close, they're like 1.2k difference, that's just the difference between like the fighting which Vayne's been doing. Vayne's kind of playing a bit better now in um, these like skirmishes and the grouping up. She wasn't very good in lane. That's partially due to her pick, I believe. Vayne kind of gets screwed over quite hard by Cogmore in lane, although Cog didn't really abuse that too much. But um, he did. They're both very, very good late game, so it doesn't really matter. Like I think the laning phase isn't too much to go off of. But uh, getting a bloodthirster, like you don't want to be getting a bloodthirster if you're behind in lane. Or if you think you're going to die because you will not be able to keep up the farm and you will be you will die. You won't be able to keep up the stacks. This vein is just playing mop up. This is why she's so fed. She gets a Yorick Ghost for starters. Which just makes the team fights pretty one sided. But she just appears when people have made some dumb, dumb decisions. Because her team is winning. Like um, Outside of Vayne they're, they're still winning. Um, Eve is 8-1-2. Holy crap I did not see that. And she's... She doesn't even have boots. She's got her hat and a Deathfire Grass. I mean, that is that is an odd build if I've ever seen one. I mean, no boots and someone like Eve, who like I've seen Eve is like one of the few characters who are, I would say like I've seen just like rush tier two boots or like boots of mobility or someone something. Sorry, uh, just because of like how much as an assassin, move speed is so important. I mean, what's her move speed? 340. Come on, Eve. Get with the game. I mean, she does have a lot of AP, but I'm surprised that she's 8 and 1 with no boots like that. She must just be getting pe picking people up in some really bad positions. And that's kind of, well, no, I'm not entirely surprised with that. I mean, that's kind of what, like, lower elos like. People do get picked off in poor positions. So she can do that. Now, this uh, Maokai has kind of counted himself by buying a Sunfire Cape. Uh, come on, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that if you are made of wood and you have leaves, then you do not buy an item which sets you on fire. And because of that, he's gonna die right here. No, he's not. Yeah, you know, I'm just, you know, I, I was only kidding, guys. He ain't gonna die. But he will die in the future because he's bought this sunfire cape. Never, never. It's flammable, it's a bad idea. He should have been paying attention when he visited the shop. But anyway, I'm not here to analyse that Malkite. So, Coggy is, let's see what his stacks. He's actually, he's fully stacked on his Bloodthirster, which is pretty impressive. I mean, that's decent. That's obviously the optimal thing that he wants to be doing. Uh, but in team fights, if he gets caught, I mean, he could die really quickly. I mean, like I said, Eve is an, Eve is an assassin, which means that he, she is Cog's worst nightmare. And she will blow this Cogmore up really, really quickly. I mean, Vayne, again, will do the same. Th I mean, they're all just... I mean, this is not a great team for, for 
Cogwam. It's it's an okay team actually, but he's positioning quite. He's uh, he's lucky Tarot didn't stun him because he was just running around and running into people there. But like I say, he needs like uh, he needs to be very careful about his positioning. He needs to be positioning from like max range and stuff like that. Now they they lost that in here, which means they're kind of doing something smart, which is like grouping up and pushing mid, because that means that they're well super creeps aren't having that much of an impact. Like I said, this evil blow people off, and she just like took out eighty percent of this Syndra's health with a combo. But what? Okay, yeah, Vayne is bot, and these guys are fighting, which is atrocious. I mean, Victor wasn't even there either, so that was like a three on five. Oh, look at that, Malachi set himself on fire and he's dead. What was he playing at? He's, he ain't no Tibetan monk. Why he set himself on fire? Poor guy, but he's dead. So three for one when they're this far behind uh, is really good. That was a nice fight for them. Although, unfortunately, it took so much out of them. Like They all blew their ulties. All their ults are on cooldown like where they where, where applicable. Uh, a lot of summoners are on cooldown. Um, but... So they they use quite a lot basically is what I'm saying to get those for a three on five which is disheartening but I mean it's a step in the right direction because they're behind and they're just trying to get you know closer together in the game. Now he's uh, Kogamon's bought a pickaxe here. Uh, in my opinion, what this guy should be buying next. Uh, looking at the enemy team, you, he does not need armor pen and I don't think he'll need it anytime soon. Victor is not buying Azonias. Vayne, uh, Vayne will probably be getting a GA fairly quickly, so I mean that's understandable. But you, I don't think he needs to be buying armor pen for her. Uh, not to mention a lot of Cog's damage comes from his W. Not all of it, but a lot of it does. So like that obviously isn't affected by armor pen because that does magic damage. So even if like he does percentage of their health as as magic damage, so you know even if you've got a lot of armor. Uh, versus Cogmore, or even if you don't have a lot of armor pen as Cogmore, then it's not that big a deal. It's not awful. It's not that bad. Um, but yeah, I mean, Tarek has a obviously has his W, and he has an uh, Aegis, so that's going to be giving a quite a lot of uh, armor. But I would just be buying an Infinity Edge on Cog, and then a GA. I think he needs a GA because of all the anti carries, and he does. I don't know whether that's just me being able to see v Victor. I could see him right here, and they do have a ward here, which means that either, you know, this is a visual bug in spectator mode where I could see him when I shouldn't have been able to see him, or Cog wasn't really paying attention and should have backed off, and he didn't. Uh, but either way, he ran into Victor, and he ran into Eve, and then they both just killed him, which obviously is uh, not optimal positioning. But we'll see what the enemy team can do out of this. It's kind of unfortunate for uh, red team because their top is so pushed at the moment that um, that blue team can just kind of ride a wave here and probably get this inhib down. Maybe at least the inhib turret. It depends. Like they should all be doing this push. I mean, who's alive? They've got everyone alive, and Vayne was the only one who died in the team fight. So they've got Eve and Yorick, who should be pushing with these two. But instead, it's just Tarek and Victor. I'm just going to change the... Yeah, okay. So, Yorick is farming golems. And these guys... Eve... Oh, Eve was there, but I have no idea. Okay, she appears just to blow her flash. Like, just to get caught out. I mean, that was a bit silly. That was a good good Victor. Good Victor Sphere. Whatever that move's called. No one knows what Victor's moves are called. Because no one plays Victor. But yeah, like I just think they should have been playing. Um, they should have been pushing a bit harder than blue team. Uh, they really need to close this game out because uh, the late game on uh, red team is actually pretty good. Cogmore is really really good late game, and when you've got a new new, especially I mean you're just like with that blood boil, you're a lot stronger late game. You just have so much. It's like you have another. It's like you have a phantom dancer that doesn't take an item slot. So, I mean. This cog will be really strong. Syndra, I'm not entirely sure how good she is late game. I'm not a. I am not I do not really know a lot about her in general, to be honest. Uh, but I, I know that she can. She's like underrated. I think Syndra is pretty decent, and I've you know she can really blow people up. She'll blow squishies up. She has so much fun loaded burst. It's unbelievable with her ult. So, 
Um, and also GP is really good late game. He can be a bit of a hyper carry, and Maokai is just like he's he's one of these CC tanky junglers. So I mean, they're all they're always useful late game as long as your team is also useful. Cog R is oh my goodness, this was so risky. I mean, they could have just been around here and just killed him, and that would have been so bad. They would have just got this in here for free. He is so lucky not to be dead right here. I bark clenched so hard. I mean, that was kind of cringeworthy. Right here, Cog, it should be popping his W and just trying to, like, poke down some people. Because he, he's so scared of everyone, even though no one's focusing him, focusing him, obviously, because they're killing his team instead. Uh, but he's actually not doing anything. He's really, really hungry for this vein, and he's just, I mean, watching him, he's not doing anything. Like, he's not actually, re it's almost as if he's not there, because he's, you know, he's so scared that he's just sitting as far back as possible and throwing out a few ults. And really... He should be, like, smartly positioning himself with his W to just, like, chunk some people. I'm actually going to rewind this team fight. Um, I don't know why I, I um, used my keyboard for that, but I'll rewind it. One more should do. One more, then. Alright, right, this is just the team fight's about to start. Now, we're just going to watch what Cogmore does this fight. Actually, you know what? Um, Cog or Vayne? Nah, fuck it, Cog. This team's behind. Right, we'll just watch what Cog does. Okay, right here, he should be attacking... He should be attacking Tarek right here. Put his W on and attack Tarek. Instead, he's trying to get for this... Trying to get onto this vein. Now he's throwing in a few punches, but he's not really doing anything. Like, right here, he should be in, getting in there, attacking these guys. But again, he's trying to go for vein with his ult. He runs so close to them, it's a, a surprise that they don't just turn around and insta-gib him. But, uh... Uh, and that was it. That was the end of the team fight. I mean, he must have like attacked three or four times. I think he could have attacked at least double that. I mean, I know he would have been like in the beginning. He would have just been attacking Tarek, but I mean, it's still not. I mean, just even though it's a support, I mean, it's not exactly focusing the support. Just because he's in your face doesn't mean you shouldn't attack him because he's a support. You shouldn't focus the support. I mean, just it's kind of like a, a misconception, like where it's almost as bad as like when people say. You know, when when AD carries or AP carries, just dive onto the enemy AD, like, even though their whole team is in front of them, and then they will, they just die because they can't reach the enemy AD because of the tanks and stuff, and, and they're like, oh, well, I need to, I'm not going to focus the tank. It's like, well, you know, just attack who you can attack. I mean, I know this gets said a lot, way too much, really. Well, kill, kill, kill tag, I'm not sure what happened there. Uh, this gets uh, said way too much, really, but... It's true where just like, don't, uh, you know, just attack whoever's closest to you, attack who you can attack. There's no real thing, real such thing as like a bad focus, so to speak. In my opinion, at least, it's a lot worse for you to be focusing nothing. I mean, that is the real bad focus when you could be putting out damage and you're putting out no damage. Because then, I mean, think about how much, you know, how much thought goes into like your item build, your runes, your masteries, your champion choice. Just to output all the damage you can, and then you're just not putting out that damage. I mean, you can you can sit there and think for like five minutes, like, okay, well, what is my DPS going to be like if I get a Infinity Edge over a Last Whisper, for example? And you can do all that maths, and you can think it through. But if if at the end of the day, if you're not attacking them, if you're you know not positioning yourself correctly then you're not going to be doing any damage. And that's something which you should be working on in team fights. Team fights are an absolute clusterfuck and it's very difficult to, you know, get good at them. And uh, it does take a lot of time to get used to team fights, to be able to, you know, look at it. Because so much is happening. You've got nine other players and they're all, you know, unpredictable because they're all human beings. No one knows what they're going to do. Probably even themselves, they don't really know what they're going to do because they're also reacting to other people. I mean, you got nine, pe ten people interacting with each other. They're all reacting on each other's moves, who are also reacting on someone else's moves, who's also reacting on these other guys' moves. So you can you can like, easily see how how very out of control and unpredictable team fights get. Very easy. It can be very very confusing, but it's something you need to to focus to practice on, especially if you're playing something like AD carry because they really do carry team fights, especially late game. You just got to work and focus on those kind of things. Now, 
this blue team, in my opinion, should have done Baron a long time ago. Uh, they while I was talking about my little spiel about whatever the hell I was talking about a second ago, while I was talking about that, blue team should have done Baron. Uh, but instead, they kind of waited around and they got this uh, inhib tower, which is okay, I guess. But I still think they should like if they did Baron, they could just end the game. I mean. They're a lot, a lot, a lot stronger than this uh, red team. And when you're a lot stronger than people, like like this this blue team could just easily tower dive and still win team fight versus this purple team. And when you're in that situation, I think it's a good idea to just take Baron and push. And as I can see here, because I'm in spectator mode, they've just taken Baron. But obviously this red team doesn't know it, and so they could be running... Like, they have no wards, which is really bad. Does this new... This new does have Sightstone. It should have Ruby Sightstone, in my opinion, right now. Uh, with that far into the game. And actually, Maokai should probably have a Sightstone. If you're playing these, like, tanky CC junglers, kind of supporty junglers, then uh, Sightstone is a really good item on them. But they just... They have no ward coverage. It, it This game... This is... But, you know, it's easy to get into that situation where you just become introverts because your you know your base is destroyed you're spending so much time on your base it's really hard to keep the wards out outside of your base but it's something you've got to do you, i mean this isn't on cogmore or anything i'm just saying in general uh you've just got to do this as a support or whatever if you've got wards you just need to put them down even like places like uh like here is a good place for a ward or like here or here just you know if you know where the enemy enemies are you know, I mean, you don't need a ward on Baron to know people are doing Baron. Like, if you've got... I'll just stop while this team fight happens. Again, Cog is really just standing still. He's not really attack moving, but at the same time, I think he's playing this team fight a lot better than the last one. Hence, but it's, it's just, it's out of control. This game's just gone, yeah, this game's kind of over now, unfortunately. It's just up to this, whenever this blue team wants to finish this game, this game will be over. Uh, but anyway, like I was saying, you don't necessarily need wards on Baron to know that they're doing Baron because say you've got it, say you've got it warded right here, yeah, and like here, for example. Uh, if you have wards there and you see that they're not there, then you can pretty much, you know, like wards don't. I say it's a lot, but wards don't only show you where people are, but they show you where people aren't. So if you're if you've got like wards there, then you realise uh, you can, you know, make intelligent deductions as to where they're probably going to be i mean if they're not in plain sight if they're not there then you know the chances are they're probably on baron or something like that um but like i say this game is just over it's just up to when uh, they're not going to be able to finish though because these guys are too low just wait <laughs> i don't really there's nothing really for me to say left left to say about this game which is why i'm kind of talking about general stuff like warding um, but it's just like this, where I think this game kind of hit the crapper was like, I mean, I I think they started off really well, the red team, but then like the roams came out from Victor and Cinder was doing really well mid lane and she's actually 8 for 5. So I can imagine her thinking like, oh my god, noob team, hello hell, I carry games but can't win, noob team. I Honestly, this Cinder is one of the worst players on their team. Uh, I think... Uh, to be fair to Cogmore, he's actually played fairly well this game. Like, if you just swapped Cogmore and Vayne, uh, then, you know, this Cog could could be winning this game. I think he'd be doing a lot more than this Vayne is in her position. I think Cog's played better, uh, but they're just kind of getting outclassed in other places. And Syndra is no exception. This Victor just roamed, got kills, and it snowballed way too much. I mean... There was a lot of uh, like activity at this bot lane, a lot of pressure, a lot of partying at bot lane. Unfortunately, though, it, it was pretty much mostly in the blue team's favour, and they kind of just like destroyed people. Like, like I say, it, it was more. Oh, okay, I got so confused. I had no idea what just happened. He just killed someone top. Sorry. Uh, yeah, it, it's just like the, the the run really by Victor just kind of, like when that happened a few times then bot lane was kind of over and, and Cogmore relies on his team to be able to do stuff, like there's a reason why 
Cog was was so like unpopular during the beginning of season two. Uh, because of like the phrase protect the cog you need to protect the cog comp because basically you need to babysit a cog more cog more relies more on a team than a lot of other ad carries do and to be honest this game cog more doesn't really have a team or the enemy's team is just too strong so it's kind of a bad position although like this this is a really good fight by cog more partially because okay it was a really good fight by cog more partially because no one was focusing him until he just ran on to you know he chased tried to chase that eve too much and then you know got caught out by the other people but i believe that is the end of the game oh is he gonna die no he's not gonna die gg cog got two kills at the end so he scores now 10 for 8 for 9 which is uh, more respectable so good job cog um so there there you go guys this is the first my first commentary of a AD carry game. Mm, yeah, really interesting. We'll, we'll see. Uh, let me know if you thought this was a decent commentary. This is the first one as well my, with my new mic. So forgive me if it wasn't so good or like whatever. Uh, but yeah. Well, thank you for watching, guys. Um, some of your feedback if you want, to, want me to replay something that as well. Thank you for watching. And uh, I will see you in my next, my next video.